What's happening, Polite Society? I hope you're having a good week. If you're here for the first time, welcome to my channel. I'm Alan. Today, we're going to be looking at Theosophy. So let's delve in. According to the official website of the Theosophical Society in America, Theosophists have three objectives. One, to form a nucleus of the Universal Brotherhood of Humanity without distinction of race, creed, gender, caste, or color. Two, to encourage the comparative study of religion, philosophy, and science. Three, to investigate unexplained laws of nature and the powers latent in humanity. In his chapter on Theosophy, Walter Martin highlights five key facts about the group. First, Theosophy's conception of God is pantheistic. In their system, God is an impersonal being. Second, Theosophists do not believe in the uniqueness of Jesus Christ. All men are Christ's in a sense. Like other Gnostic groups, the Theosophical Society divides Jesus and Christ. Jesus is thought of as the outer man, while Christ is the divine consciousness, not only within Jesus of Nazareth, but all men to a smaller or to a larger degree. One Theosophist author named L. W. Rogers wrote, World teachers, the Christs, and saviors of the age have been appearing at propitious times since humanity began existence. Piggybacking on that is third, the Mahatmas, or the Ascended Masters. These are the teachers who communicate hidden truth through reincarnated ambassadors. Helena Blavatsky and Annie Besant, I hope I'm pronouncing her last name correctly, both of whom we will look at later, are among the small number of these wise instructors. Fourth, theosophy, like other religions such as Thelema and Baha'i, is syncretistic. It draws heavily from Hinduism, Buddhism, Gnosticism, and other religions. Christian sources are often interpreted through the teaching lens of these other sects. And last, the principle of reincarnation is important in theosophical thought and practice. The word theosophy comes from the Greek term theosophia, which means divine wisdom. The contemporary version of Theosophy can be traced back to Helena Blavatsky. Helena was born in Russia in the year 1831. She came from a noble family. At a young age, she married a Tsarist general, who she quickly left. It's been said that the madam had a short fuse and a temper. After leaving her husband, she traveled the world, utilizing her work as a medium in order to support herself. Blavatsky studied many different religions, including Hinduism, Tibetan Buddhism, Native American polytheism, and voodooism. She had many unusual beliefs, including her views on Lucifer. On Saturdays, we have been looking at the women's movement. It is noteworthy that several female activists appear to have drawn on Blavatsky's Luciferian interpretation of Genesis chapter 3. The madam argued that Lucifer brought mankind spiritual wisdom. In her book, The Secret Doctrine, she wrote, It is but natural, even from the dead letter standpoint, to view the serpent of Genesis as the real creator and benefactor, the father of spiritual mankind. For it is he who is the harbinger of light, bright, radiant Lucifer, who opened the eyes of the automaton created by Jehovah, as alleged, and he who was the first to whisper, In the day ye eat thereof, ye shall be as Elohim, knowing good and evil. Elizabeth Cady Stanton, a leading 19th century suffragist, was one of the primary authors of the Woman's Bible. Similar to Blavatsky, the Woman's Bible esteems Lucifer. In the commentary on Genesis 3, the Wicked One is likened to Socrates and Plato, and it is said of him, His powers of conversation and asking puzzling questions were no doubt marvelous, and he roused in the woman that intense thirst for knowledge. According to scholar Kerry Gress, as a concept, theosophy was loose enough to accommodate many egalitarian ideals. And Stanton was not the only women's leader to be influenced by the madam. Many years later, Gloria Steinem referred to her mother as engaging in theosophy as the movement experienced a resurgence of sorts in the free love era of the 1960s. Blavatsky drew not only from Hindu, Buddhist, and Gnostic sources, but Egyptian polytheistic thought can also be found in some of her writings. For the ancient Egyptians, God was the eye of the universe the symbol of the deity revealing itself in the wisdom of its own creation, as the madam put it in one place. She wrote it was the Lagos, the first begotten or a light made manifest to the world, 
which is the mind and divine intellect of the concealed. Some people have said that the one eye is a symbol which is showcased commonly in the mainstream, but that's just crazy talk. <laughs> Another key figure of the Theosophical Society is Annie Besant. Once again, I hope I'm pronouncing her last name correctly. She became a devout pupil of the madam. Annie had quite a few accomplishments. She founded the Central Hindu College at Banaras in India in 1898. She was also politically active, campaigning for democracy in India after the First World War broke out. Another noteworthy figure in Theosophy is Alice Bailey, who founded the Lucifer Publishing Company. The name was later changed to the Lucis Publishing Company. The Theosophical Society also used the name Lucifer for its early magazine. Let's turn to criticism. In terms of redemption, theosophy does not offer forgiveness of sins. Instead, man undergoes a series of reincarnations in order to achieve salvation. God is impersonal in theosophy, and therefore not compatible with the God of sacred scripture. Most alarming is the Theosophist's rejection of the vicarious atonement of Jesus Christ on the cross. Theosophist writer L. W. Rogers, who was mentioned earlier, has stated, The man who is willing to purchase bliss by the agony of another is unfit for heaven, and could not recognize it if he were there. A heaven populated with those who have seen the vicarious atonement, the happy arrangement of letting them in pleasantly and easily, would not be worth having. And Annie once wrote, the atonement wrought by Christ lies not in the substitution of one individual for another. Contrary to Rogers and Annie, three key apostles who penned 20 of the 27 New Testament documents have written that Christ died for the ungodly. The blood of Jesus, his, that is God's, son, cleanses us from all sin. And we were not redeemed with perishable things like silver and gold, but with precious blood, as of a lamb and unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. And the Lord Jesus himself said, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. Additionally, reincarnation takes the place of resurrection in theosophy. Yet the Apostle tells us, if Christ has not been raised, our faith is worthless, and we are still in our sins. For Paul, our hope for our future resurrection is directly tied to the victorious physical resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. For if we have hoped in Christ in this life only, we are of all men most to be pitied. And he follows with, But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who are asleep. And since we are also critiquing the women's movement on Saturdays, I would be remiss without echoing an insightful comment by the late Walter Martin. One of the strange heretical peculiarities of the saga of the heretical groups is that some were started by women. Christian Science, Mary Baker Eddy. Spiritism, the Fox Sisters, and Theosophy, Madame Elena Blavatsky. In the first century, Paul strictly instructed the Church to forbid women from usurping the authority of men. We have seen the consequences of that in the 19th, 20th, and 21st centuries, when that directive has not been obeyed. In relation to Rogers, who stated that God must have sent world teachers prior to Jesus, the Lord Jesus said, All who came before me are thieves and robbers but the sheep did not hear them. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. To be sure, the Sovereign Lord sent many prophets and messengers prior to the Incarnation, but they prophesied about the coming one and pointed forward to his messianic reign. They did not teach untrue doctrines and heresies. In summation, the Theosophical Society is a false and heretical sect that rejects almost every single core and essential Christian doctrine. Though they will always be our spiritual enemies as long as they continue to hold to their false beliefs, let us pray for them. Let's pray that the Spirit 
will work in their hearts so that they will turn to the true Jesus as he is freely offered in the gospel. The sources that I used are available in the description below. All right, that's a wrap for now, ladies and gents. If you want to share your own thoughts, be sure to do so in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like the content here, you can subscribe by clicking on the icon on the bottom right. Then you can hit the bell for notifications. I upload a new video every Wednesday and every Saturday. Have an awesome rest of your week. And for my brothers and sisters in the Lord, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all always. I will see you all in the next video. God's blessings on your week.